at the greatest Ashline vacation there ever was. December 5th, 2007 was the beginning of the most exciting three days of my life. Santa granted the Ashlands with a five-day vacation down to Florida. The best part was that our flight left in three hours. So you can imagine the chaos. We got nine people in the house, seven kids. We're young. It's 2007. I'm nine. We're trying to figure out how to pack, yet still play with the toys that we just got. So our mom's freaking out, trying to get us all going, shoving us into the car. Somehow we get the customs with a half hour to spare. Long line because it's the holidays, so we all reach into our bags, pull out our toys. I got my Rubik's Cube because I was a little Einstein back then. Brother Luke had his incredible whole cans, punching everything. But Brother Sam pulls up his airsoft gun. <laughs> Pretends to start shooting everybody in the line, and my mom freaked. Has a heart attack because she didn't think we were going to get on that plane. So she grabs Sam, throws it away, she goes through all of our bags before Customs does. Nothing else was found, and we made it. The rest of the day, we got down there by 5. We got our rooms. Everything else was pretty standard, except we went to the pool. I was down there. I was swimming. I was chilling in the hot tub. I probably got for Christmas in my pocket. Mom was pissed. <laughs> so Mom had literally probably one of the worst days she's ever had. So now we're down to day two, and we spent the entire day at Disney. It was amazing. And the, door, the day was going great until my dad made us go on this Lilo and Stitch 4D adventure. And I don't know if any of you guys have been to Disney and gone on the ride, but it's a little 4D, so you can, we're like watching a movie, except you can feel stuff. So at one point, Stitch is eating a churro, and he farts. <laughs> and the entire room starts to smell like gas. And then they also put like a little water mist on your neck, and it just, it felt disgusting. Really freaked out my brother Max. He goes sprinting out of the ride, so now we all have to go after him. Max isn't out there. So we're going around, we're looking for him. We haven't told mom yet, because mom just had the most stressful day one of her life, that we're just trying to let her reality, relax. And finally, my dad's about to get on the phone when we hear, we have a young child named Max Ashland at the hot dog stand. <laughs> mom, mom, mom hears it, because it's all over Magic Kingdom. So she comes running to the hot dog stand, yelling at my dad. She can't believe what happened. Max was hungry, and then at least he was smart enough to tell the hot dog vendor to say his name over the intercom, so I thought that was good for him. So the idea of the vacation was to go to Disney every single day. Max ruined that idea. The next day we're going to the beach, because nothing wrong can happen at the beach. So we're at the beach, and the only talk that was going on was we were planning how we were going to kill our brother Max. We almost succeeded. <laughs> At dinner, we go to Bubba Gump Shrimp. Max is in there, chowing away. He's like a human vacuum. He eats anything. So he eats. We're going back to the hotel, and Max stops to go to the hotel lobby bathroom. We just thought he had to go to the bathroom. Half hour goes by. Where's Max? So she sends down me and Luke to go get her brother. We open the elevator. Max is sitting in the elevator, sweating, crying. Can't talk. So <laughs> Max. So, I didn't know what was wrong. Luke and I just thought that he had a stomach ache, so we were actually kind of making fun of him. And he somehow wobbles down the uh, down the hallway, gets to our room, knocks on it, and Luke and I go down to the lobby and get some drinks and bring him up. Turns out Max is definitely allergic to shrimp. So that night ends with Max in the hospital. It's not. It's not, it wasn't funny at the time, but you know what? Now looking back at it, Max kind of ruined that time. <laughs> Mom is fuming. She gets back. So now we're not even allowed to go to the beach. Day three, four, and five, we're at the hotel pool. No one's moving from mom's sight. So we're just swimming in the loan because no one's even going to the deep end at this point. So it ends. We get in the car to go back to the airport. And once we got in the airport, mom made the rule if she hears any of us talking by the time we set foot in our house, we're done. So that was awful. That was four hours of just. Silence, no one was saying anything. We get home, this vacation's finally over, thank God. Lost my backpack. <laughs> so, I'm a wreck. My dad tells me to forget it, but like, had my Rubik's Cube in there, had my math homework for winter vacation, had my wallet, my wallet had like 15 bucks in it. So, my dad told me to forget about it, I forgot about it. Vacation's still fine. <laughs> but it wasn't over. Just four days later, I got a package in the mail. It was my backpack. <laughs> so the moral of the story is always keep your name and address in your wallet. <laughs>